So I have probably created over 200 games and I have published around 10 games and I learned a lot about optimization and I want to share that with you. Starting with the first tip, which is always cache your components. What does that mean? Well, often you will see a code like this in every single tutorial, in a lot of online courses and so on and so forth. I don't want to get into it, but you see this line of code. In fixed update or even in the update, so if I remove fixed, we have the update function, we are using get component and then we're getting the desired component in this case the rigid body and then we are performing whatever we want to do with that component now this is wrong for many reasons because you are calling this inside of the update function which is called every frame or even in the fixed update which is called every second or third frame depending on the time rate I also don't want to get into that as well but anyways this is called a lot of times in a single second and this can be very costly especially on mobile games so as a general rule as a general rule, you should always cache your component like this, so you can create a rigid body or a private rigid body like this. And then inside of your awake function, you will get a reference to that like that. And from there, you can simply call the code like this. Now, as I said, as a general rule, what does that mean? Well, sometimes you cannot avoid using get component because you will see online for people who are talking about this, they will say never use get component at runtime. Runtime means that your game is running and you're playing it. But sometimes you will have situations where you simply need to use get component during runtime. It's okay if you don't overuse it, but always use the profiler to check out the condition and the state of your game. Now, the next thing that we have is caching components versus serialized field. What does that mean? Well, is it better to use uh, or to create a variable like this and inside of a wake function get a reference to it or to simply do like this? create it as a serialized field, we can then remove this from here and then we can go inside of our game if Unity lets me to. And then I can simply drag my game object inside of here to have a reference to it. Now, of course, the latter, which is this one or the later, not the latter, the later is more efficient, but you will not have that chance every single time to use serialized field. For example, if you want to get a reference to, let's say, an enemy that's in the scene, from the player class, for example. You cannot do it with a serialized field because, you know, maybe that enemy is not in the scene. Maybe you're using instantiate to instantiate that enemy and so on and so forth. But wherever you can, you should use this code. Of course, also sometimes, especially depending on what you're doing. But for example, what I do in my games is I have my levels. And if I want to drag them inside of this serialized field, well, it can take a lot of time, especially if I have, let's say, a thousand levels in the game. So maybe in scenarios like that, you can use in awake and get a reference to that or in start function. I'm calling, I'm saying awake this whole time because awake is the first initialization function that's being called. So after that, we have on enable and start. I usually put all my initialization code in awake because it's the first function that's being called. So yeah, that will be it. Another very very common mistake that I see a lot of times is the following. So for example, you want to do some calculations. Let's say you have two variables over here, private, transform, and one is going to be the enemy position. Actually, it doesn't have to be two, but one. And we can say over here, vector three, we want to calculate the distance and we can say distance to enemy. We can say transform position minus enemy position dot position. This is also another thing. And this is usually called in the fixed update. And as I was saying, this is another very common mistake that I see is also creating these let's say not component variable. So vector three, which is also an object variable and it is being created over and over inside the update function. Now, once I was working, I believe it was Pookie Ninja. I believe it was, I don't know, or some other mobile game, not doesn't matter. But when I profiled the game, I had a line of code like this, which was creating a vector inside of the update function. That single line of code was causing 0.02 milliseconds. And it takes you 16 milliseconds to achieve or below 16 milliseconds you need to achieve over 60 or 60 frames per second. So you can imagine that this single line of code takes 0.02. That's a lot. I mean, if you look at this simple 
app or game over here, it's not a lot, but if you have a thousand scripts, if you have thousands of game objects, you can see how that can quickly get, you know, a lot. So the solution is again over here, private vector three, and then distance to enemy. And then from there, you are simply going to remove this fr from here, which is not going to create a new object every single time. I did the same thing in my game and the 0 0.02 milliseconds that was taking the time to execute that was gone. Moving forward to more common code that is wrong that you see online, which is this one. Inside of update function, we would do something like this. For example, we need to get something from the camera. We would say camera.main, let's say dot transform dot position. For example, in order to either get the camera's position or to change it. So here we can say, for example, vector three temp is going to equal to like that. So you see a lot of people using camera.main, be that in the update, be that in the fixed update, the late update, and so on and so forth, which is also wrong because camera.main internally calls get component on the camera game object. So again, going back to caching over here, you would do something like pri private camera main cam, and then you would get a reference in the wake function main cam is equal to its main cam is equal to camera dot main. Now from there, you can simply do this and voila, there you go. And the problem is solved. But again, this is something you see very, very often, which takes a lot of resources from your game. Now, another thing that you also see often, and I'm here, I should have named this video often mistakes. <laughs> but anyways, this is also one thing that you see. For example, again, let's use the temp. So vector three temporary position TMP is equal to transform that position. And that would just say something like temp.x plus equals, let's say one multiplied by time dot delta time doesn't matter. And then I would say transform that position is equal to temp. Now, what is wrong with this code? When you look at it, you will say nothing. I've also been guilty. And even sometimes now I use this code, but essentially if you over do it and it's a good idea that you don't it will hit you on performance so what is the issue here well transform this right here the transform is internally calling get component transform so it is again better to do this private transform my transform for example and inside of the awake we will say my transform is equal to your transform and then from there we will proceed to do something like this and there you go it's the same exact code but much much more efficient so much more efficient now another thing that you probably didn't know which is something that takes a lot of performance is this right here having a wake and having a start function and also having for example on enable and so on and so forth but you're not like now like teacher are you mad what how are these functions well listen to me if you have these functions like this empty so if you have them like empty inside of your game or inside of your script even the update function fixed update whatever of these callback functions that are being called so awake awake start enable they are called when the game or the when, when the script or the game object holding the script is created update is called every frame so on and so forth but if they are empty they will still take up resources they will still take up resources and to demonstrate this i'm going to go inside of the scene where i have prepared two game objects one is called create empty another create without empty this has this simple script that will create a thousand copies from the prefab that we provide and we provide two prefabs one is over here let me quickly go empty which basically has the empty callback functions and another has this script over here which doesn't have any empty callback functions so let's take a look at here in the profiler and I'm going to turn off rendering everything except for the script because this will come from the script so the spikes will come from the script if I hit the play button you will notice over here that we have the normal flow of the profiler for the script if I go here and create the ones that don't, that don't have the empty script. So the prefab that doesn't have the empty script, if I hit here, activate this object, you see it created a thousand of clones, nothing happened. We see over here that everything is normal. Notice what will happen in the spikes over here in the profiler when I now turn on the game object that is supposed to create the empty one. So if I go here, bam, look at that. Look at this spike over here, look at that. So just that single thing took 0.33 milliseconds. So look at that over here. You see, and you, you can see the spikes over here. Look at these small ones and then the huge ones, all because we have simply created game objects that only have these functions, but nothing inside.
Now you can imagine if you have thousands of these, if you're creating a lot of enemies that have an empty awake, empty start that you never use, or even an empty update, which is called every frame and continues to be called every frame. So you can imagine how that will have an impact on your game. So for that, just make sure that you, that you remove any empty callback functions that you do not need. The last tip that I'm going to leave you with is instead of creating large levels for your game, you can create prefabs out of your levels, which over here you can see if I go, I have, you know, my levels as prefabs and then I use instantiate. Now, of course, instantiate is something or a function that you don't want to use during gameplay, but that is often. If you are loading a level, which means you're destroying the current level and loading a new one, you can simulate that with a loading screen. So turn on a loading screen that will be previewed on the you know front page of your game. And then in the behind or in the back end, you can instantiate your level. Of course, be careful. Don't make your levels you know too large and always use the profiler. If you want more tips how to optimize your games, I have a really cool blog post, which this video is based off of on, upon, I don't know how to say that, but yeah, these examples are inside of the blog post. You can see those examples with code. You can copy and use the code and so on and so forth. And I have probably a hundred more examples that I didn't mention here. And just click the link down below and you know, everything is free. It's, you know, free advice. You can take it and learn from it and yada, yada, yada. That would be it for this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.